Good evening and welcome to the MTG News for June. I'm John from Double Sleeve. In today's news, Wizards intentions for companions caused millions of inclusions but negative opinions and resulted in rules adaptations, card devaluations and an inundation of reclamations. As if two releases of spoilers weren't enough, less than two months later we got another even bigger spoiler season with M21 and Jumpstart giving us the taste of things to come. And with many still housebound due to Covid-19, Wizards of the Coast wastes no time in updating Arena and MTGO schedules. Not only do we have new competitions, but Mac users can play the game now too. Excellent. Companions. With the launch of Companions during Ikoria, the new mechanic had caused a stir within constructed formats for its free card advantage for a limited restriction. Warning bells were sounding when we saw Lutri banned in singleton formats before it had even been released. And although Companions weren't banned, they were given a stern talking to and told they were only allowed to come and play if they were good and if they waited for their owner to pay three mana at sorcery speed to put them into their hand. Has this killed the mechanic? Well, yes. But we all make mistakes and we approve of Wizards trying to push the boundaries. Maybe rein it in this year though. In similar news, we saw the banning of Agent of Treachery and Fires of Invention in Standard and Historic. No surprise there, both cards were narrowing the format's diversity. Now we can all enjoy playing the Reclamation format, or Standard as it's known. I hope the new set will help balance the power issues. On the topic of new cards, June has been one hell of a month for new card reveals. We started on the 5th of June with Core 2021 for 10 days and then we had three mega days of Jumpstart spoilers. And Core 2021 sees the return of these mechanics. Prowess, gaining plus one plus one for the turn when you cast a non-creature spell. Mill, which is now an official term for putting cards from your library into the graveyard. And a mechanic that's not been seen for 23 years. Phasing, where a card doesn't leave or enter the battlefield, just ceases to exist temporarily. This set also sees the return of Teferi, Liliana, Chandra, Garruk, Ugin and the introduction of a new Planeswalker, Basri Kett. And if you're new to the game and you want to learn which core sets traditionally help with, then the announcement of the new Welcome Boosters may tickle your fancy. Some decent reprints to encourage new players to get involved and pick up that cardboard. Alongside M21 we have Jumpstart and although we're excited for the new core set, We've been surprised by the response to Jumpstart, the standalone sealed game. Now, Jumpstart is a new concept. It's boosters that you combine together to make decks, and they explain it like this. Each Jumpstart booster has 20 cards inside. All 20 cards fit a theme, and most themes have multiple variations, enough to make 121 possible 20 card lists inside each pack. There are 500 reprints in this set, and 37 new cards, which will only be legal in eternal formats, and one in three packs has an extra rare in it. So why should these two new releases get you excited? Who doesn't love a reprint? Well in July, when all these cards get to us, we will have seen reprints of Grim Tutor, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, Azusa Lost But Seeking, Containment Priest, Scavenging Ooze, Heroic Intervention, Tormod's Crypt, and Solemn Simulacrum. And in Jumpstart, we get Craterhoof Behemoth, Shieldred the Whispering One, Linvala Keeper of Silence, Oracle of Moldaya, Ristic Study, again, Phyrexian Tower, Ghoul Caller Giza, and many more. This is before looking at some of the fab new cards too. This is brilliant news, and not only that, but Jumpstart packs are retailing at £3.75. Wow. No surprise, people will struggle to decide where to spend their money. Just a shame that Jumpstart has been delayed until no current release date in Europe. Um, should be in time for everyone else though, and digital release is still the 16th. With the core set out and about, it only gives us a few months until everything rotates and Eldrain becomes our oldest set. It feels like only last week we were playing our fairy tale games of magic with Oko. But it also means Zendikar is around the corner and new Commander cards over the next six months. Exciting for everyone. The digital world sees MTGA release on Macintosh on June the 25th on the Epic Games Store, finally. 
And there have been some changes to the collation and reprint opening rates, which means you will get a full collection before you get more than a playset of any cards or banned cards. A welcome change. New deck building improvements have also been made, allowing advanced searching terms, something that I'm sure improves the experience for many. Worth having a look when you're next online. And Magic Online has event after event, with limited formats getting casual, competitive and cube drafting. Rewards are plenty for those skillful enough to win a few games. And now for the Reddit Roundup. Firstly, with Wizards announcing Core 2021, they finally amended the Hound subtype to be Dog, which was a missed trick as we agree with Danamauchi's girlfriend that it should have been Doggo. Princess Tuka seems like a formidable opponent. Some skillfully creative work from Goblin Game 18 with a sweet double commander box. Boris Tastic and the swirling engravings are a nice finishing touch. Anyone fond of Kamigawa will want to check out this amazing Klimt style altar by Luke Emerton, highlighted by Rakuk of Tamio the Moon Sage. Amazing. Lastly, we have an altar posted by just a friend for you of Kess Distant Mage. Well, that is out of this world. And that rounds up June's MTG News. Thank you for watching and good night.